about enthusiasm in, in, in Asia, Asia, in people like, like emphasis on, on hard working and service to the seniors and like keeping harmony. In the West, maybe it's more like, a, like passion, uh, some like altruism, uh, some missionary work. But so what it truly is the, 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 the enthusiasm in practice and in Buddhism? You know, people put their, we make an effort in different ways. If you don't make any effort, then soon you'll die. You know, even if you want to eat, you have to get up and go get some food or go to the kitchen. All babies naturally have this effort to live. So if they're uncomfortable or hungry, they cry. Actually, you probably notice little children can s scream so loud. Like a two-year-old can scream way louder than an adult because they do it 100%. And they're not thinking about, I'm going to do this 100%. They just really do it, their whole body. I saw Sung San Sinim that way. Sometimes when he did something, it's like whole body was doing it. And it was natural. He trained himself that way. And um, so what's important is where do you, what, what is the direction of your effort? I think in East Asia, the tradition of filial piety was, is really strong, still strong. In fact, what I've heard is in Chinese society, when you make a baby, the baby's job is to take care of me when I get old. <laughs> I'm so glad my parents weren't like that. <laughs> I think uh, Western families sort of have that, but it's not as codified. It's not in a code as much. I mean, the Ten Commandments say, honor your parents, but they don't say, live with them forever and take care of them. <laughs> when I worked in the mental hospital, we often had firstborn women who grew up in Italian families. And they had become crazy because their family gave them the message, your job in life is to stay home and take care of me when I get old. Then when they're teenagers and they become interested in other things, they have to repress it. And then there's this battle inside between this idea you get from parents or society and what you kind of more naturally want to do. So yeah, everybody, cultures and individuals uh, put effort in different ways into their daily life. And depression is kind of where you've, um, you've blocked off your uh, effort in a certain way. Uh, and I'm sure there's many reasons why that happens. Uh, feelings that I'm not gonna get what I'm after anyway, or there's conflict with society, or especially when you're young, family, between what you're sort of naturally enthusiastic and what's acceptable. And you can see, you know, Korea, we're in Korea, and uh, Korea, Korean people, I don't know the young people, but Korean people, the older people, work really hard. Much harder than most of us who grew up in the West. Now, I don't know Poland, because Poland was destroyed during the war, too. But it rebuilt. And Korea was destroyed during the Korean War and oppressed by the Japanese occupation. And it's like the 11th biggest economy in the world now. 
And it's a fairly small country. So sometimes when the uh, uh, Westerners come here and they have to work in the kitchen, they're kind of shocked. And they, they can't follow what some of the Korean people are doing. Because Koreans, they just grew up working really hard. Like I said, I don't know what the younger people are like now because they grew up when the country's already successful. And I think what Sung San Sinu's generation and maybe the generation after that, they lived to survive. But now people live for satisfaction. And there's a different motivation then. They're both worthwhile, but when you live to survive, you either are enthusiastic or you die. <laughs> when you live to, for satisfaction, you can find ways to survive even without being satisfied. So uh, one of the six virtues, uh, the six paramitas in Buddhism is enthusiasm, putting your effort into the present moment. In fact, Buddha said there's five hindrances to meditation. The first one is uh, sleepiness. You know, everybody kind of experiences this sometime during the day, morning, night, mid-afternoon, maybe for you, all day long. You're like, uh. If you 100% fall asleep, it's no problem. My experience is if I'm sitting and I 100% fall asleep, it only lasts a few seconds. And then when I wake up, my body's very nicely tired, but I'm really clear because it was 100%. But most of the time, it's not 100%. Because when we do something, we don't do it 100%. So when we fall asleep, we also don't do it 100%. <laughs> But sleepiness is one of the hindrances, and it's, it's just a habit. And um, also this heavy kind of thick feeling. I had a friend growing up who used to call it quicksand, mind quicksand. You just can't think clearly, and you're not that interested. And Buddha said the cure for that, <coughs> the English translation is <coughs> initial application. It just means try. You know, if your job is sit, sit. Sometimes uh, during retreat, especially if it's the same people for a few weeks, sometimes something will happen like where one person will think of something funny or they'll see the person next to them do something funny, you know, like fall asleep or something, and they start laughing and you hear that laughter and you also start laughing. I remember this happened at Shinwan Sa. And like, it's kind of spread around the room. And Subang Sinim was the teacher that time. He was sitting and he said, bite your tongue. Everybody bite your tongue. <laughs> and if you bite your tongue, then it's harder to laugh. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I had a real entertaining night one time at Shinwan Sa about 30 years ago where there's a very tall, thin German monk. And he was falling asleep, and he was like two or three people down. And nobody came and went during the three months. And we didn't have any temple jobs except cleaning our area. We didn't cook the food. We didn't shop. We didn't <coughs> take care of guests, nothing. Just retreat, keep our area clean. And we didn't talk much, and we all lived in one building. So there wasn't much entertainment. So this was like real, it was like watching a TV series for me, watching this guy. <laughs> and I, I was sitting down the row, kind of watching him out of the corner of my eye. It's like, okay, something interesting is happening finally. <laughs> and it's like, is this guy's head going to hit the floor, you know? And he'd get really, he was really tall and thin, he'd get really close to the floor, and then phew, he'd pull back up, you know? So, you know, I didn't start laughing. Maybe if he had hit the floor, I would have laughed. One time he fell asleep while he was doing standing meditation, and that time he did hit the wall. And, you know, everybody was like, oh, great, something happened, yay, you know? But, uh, 
And so the first thing that happens is uh, sleepiness or kind of laziness. And initial application means try. Whatever the thing is, try. Try to stay awake, you know? If you have a mantra, do it. You're going to breathe, so pay attention to your breathing. Maybe it's not very deep right now. Okay, where am I feeling stuck? Blah, blah, blah. So try. Second thing is doubt. This is a hindrance because we doubt. <clears throat> Maybe we doubt, oh, I don't think this practice can help me. Or mantra. I remember asking Sansanim once, can I change my mantra? And one of the older students was sitting there and he said, you're only allowed to change it once, which probably had nothing to do with anything, but he decided to say that, you know. <laughs> but it wasn't that I needed a different mantra, it's just that I need, needed to try harder. So we have this doubt, it's small doubt. It's not this big thing of like, what is life, what is death? It's just like, oh, maybe this isn't gonna help me. Or somebody told me they signed up for a retreat and right before they came, they thought, why am I doing this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, that's okay, that's, a, that's a, it's a kind of doubt. Uh, the cure for that is try more. Make more of an effort. The reason we have doubt about practice is because we don't really focus we don't, we're not able to focus ourselves and do it. Uh, someone, you know, the Chinese have many different mantras for many different things. This sickness has that mantra, and this sickness has that mantra. And I was talking with De Kwan Sinim in Hong Kong one day, and they were doing a great Durrani Kido. And she said she never felt that connected at that time with the great Durrani. But, you know, Sung Sansan got enlightened chanting the great Durrani, and it's, it's a wonderful chant, and we do it. And she said during that chant, she realized it's just do it. It's not about this chant or that chant or that chant. When you 100% do it, that's when you, you know, feel alive and get something, get that live energy. So uh, doubt also, just do it. Then the third thing, a uh, hindrance that appears is we have bad feelings towards others or towards ourselves, And these things happen in everyday life too. You know, you have some career, I don't like it. Well, try harder, really pay attention and do it. You'll either find, my experience is, every profession has some shit. Every single one that you do has some crummy part to it. So that's just life, you know. But um, if you, the, the reason many people don't feel good about what they're doing is they're checking a lot and they're not really doing it. And so if you really do it, either the satisfaction comes from your try mind or you'll quit. That's how I ended up in the Zen Center. I was doing something and when I finally started practicing, I realized, I'm building a weapon. I don't want to do that. And just in the middle of the morning quit when that became clear. So um, this do it mind is very important. And it's really easy to develop bad feelings. You know, you don't like this person or you feel bad about yourself or whatever. But one of the fruits of meditation and practicing is joy. And my experience is when you can really just bring yourself in the present moment, it takes time. It took me a lot of time. I think for other people, maybe much faster. <clears throat> but when you feel joy, what's the point of having bad feelings about others? It's like a waste of energy. If you put your attention into what you're doing, why waste energy thinking about other people? It's, it just doesn't make any sense. So then it's easy to drop this mind that wants to make bad feelings about others. Just do, do what you're doing. Do it. There's a certain joy that comes from that. When you only aim at the result, you know, sports people, sometimes they say, well, I play because I love it. When they are focused on the money or the success, then it's not quite as wonderful. But when they just are, do it, 
there's a certain satisfaction that comes from that. Fourth problem is restlessness. And I don't know if any of you feel it yet, but sometimes during a retreat, you feel like, oh, I just want to go out and do something, you know? I remember being living at the Zen Center in Providence and uh, working outside. I was a lay person. And after about two years, I was, I was getting into the practice. I was getting energy, and, and I was beginning to understand the teaching, Buddhist teaching and Sung San Sanim's teaching and the, the, the life of living together. And I thought, you know, I want to kind of travel around America and look around some more. I had done it earlier in my life, but I wanted to do it some more. And then one morning, I looked around at breakfast, and there was such a weird collection of people. I felt like I don't have to go anywhere. You know, look, you come here, Russians, Koreans, Hong Kong people, Koreans who live in Germany, you know, American guys, Lithuanian people, another Hong Kong, Polish, a bunch of Polish people, you know, Malaysian, French. Hey. What do you think of our food, <laughs> Miss Paris? <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know, it's like men, women, monks, nuns, you know, birds, these weirdo cats that were born here. You know, there's so much cool stuff. It's like you don't have to go anywhere. Climb the mountain if you want, you know, whatever. So uh, then I realized I don't have to go anywhere. It's like the whole weird circus in Korea, in, in, in the Zen Center passes through, definitely with Sung San Sinim. He would bring all kinds of people with him. And, uh, and I, I think that's true many places, you know. So um, restlessness. Also, the same category of hindrance is regret and remorse. Remorse is you feel bad about usually having made somebody else feel bad, done something or not done something that harmed somebody. That's what remorse is. Regret is more towards yourself. I regret I did this or I regret I didn't do that. That stuff can come up when we sit. It comes up in everyday life, but it can come up when we sit. What is the cure for restlessness, regret, remorse? Enthusiasm. What does that mean? The only part of life that's happening is right now. All that stuff is thinking. The past, the future, it's all thinking. It's got nothing to do with anything except your thinking. Life is now. And if you just put your energy into what is my correct situation now, my correct action now, sitting, just sit there, you know? Doesn't matter so much what the experience is. Do it. Pay attention. Sit up straight when you, most of the time you can. If you can't, if nobody's looking, you know, a little. <laughs> Japanese style, they'll, they'll get after you if you do that. Korean style, if you don't bother anybody, you know, a little bit, it's okay, as long as the head monk's not looking, or the teacher. <laughs> you know, do it. You know, if you're doing mantra, do it. I, uh, when I worked in the shipyard, I remember sometimes I'd be so bummed out. And what everybody would do is a huge yard. It was 10,000 people. And so they had toilets like, that would have like 40 toilet stalls, you know, in different parts of the yard. And people were always writing stuff inside the stalls. This is what almost 50 years ago, and there was some cool stuff, you know. Maybe it's written everywhere, but one of them was like, um, save the way, no, it said, ban the nukes, ban the nukes. This was in the 60s and 70s, there was a big thing, get rid of nuclear weapons. And the phrase was, ban the nukes. And so somebody had written, ban the nukes, and of course we're making a nuclear submarine. So, you know, then somebody else at another time wrote underneath it, save the whales. So it's like, okay, that's a little more positive. I like that. And somebody else wrote under that, nuke the whales. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so like, 
you could go into the bathroom and hang out for 10 or 15 minutes, and you didn't want to go to all the stalls in one day or one week. You wanted to give yourself some candy for the future. So I just, I didn't have to go to the bathroom. I just didn't want to work. Go in there and read the stuff, you know. <laughs> it was very funny. Somebody wrote, you know, God is dead, Nietzsche. But then, of course, somebody underneath that wrote, Nietzsche's dead, God. <laughs> you know? Many good things. And then stupid, you know, male stuff, too. But one time I went in there, and I had taken, gone with a friend on a, a sailboat, small sailboat, across from uh, this, the state of Connecticut. There's a, a, a big sound this big open space of water, and then there's Long Island, and uh, which is part of New York. And we got out there. I had never had this before on a small boat and couldn't see any land. And it was amazing. We were in this little boat, and his father was sailing, and his father only had one arm. He had lost an arm in a war or something. And... And then I started diving off the boat and swimming back to it and think if the boat went away, I'm dead. I don't think I can swim back to shore, you know. And it was so cool. And so one day when I was bored at work, I went in there and I wrote this whole story down, you know. And somebody, of course, wrote underneath it like, ha, ha. You know, kind of like, that's not where you are, dude. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um, anyway... Enthusiasm, you know, put in your energy into what you're doing. And that takes away regret and remorse about the past because you're doing what you're doing. And so enthusiasm is important, you know. And it just means make that effort. It's one of the six paramitas. And make the effort. And in Buddhism, you want to find what is the correct situation, function, and relationship to do it. Not just what do I want to do, but what really fits my situation now. And do it. Yeah. So everybody has different levels of uh, enthusiasm that they bring to life. And you can adjust that. It's just uh, effort and attention. <laughs>